Hello! In this episode 4.8 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon FICO Processors, we'll talk about parallel reduction in OpenMP4 loops. In our example where we use a parallel loop to add together integers from 0 to n-1, the key operation is summation. This is an associative operation which we apply to a shared variable in a parallel loop. Such operations are typical in high-performance computing applications and there is an effective way to express this operation in OpenMP code. First, let's take a look at built-in functionality in OpenMP for parallel reduction. In this code, we inserted into Pragma OMP Parallel a new clause, which reads reduction plus column sum. This tells the OpenMP implementation that inside this loop we are going to apply the summation operation to this variable, and our goal is to correctly find the net sum of all addition operations across all threads. OpenMP will perform some operations behind the scenes which will produce the correct result, and this result will be derived quickly. Finally, we have an implementation of this parallel loop which is correct and efficient. It is important to demystify the process that OpenMP uses to protect the race condition without serializing the code. To understand what happens behind the scenes, consider this alternative implementation of parallel reduction. In this program, variable sum is shared between all threads. However, when we start the parallel region, we create in each thread a private variable called sumTH and initialize it with zero. Then we start a parallel loop and inside this loop we increment the private variable sumTH instead of sum. Now we don't have a race condition because each thread writes to its own memory region. However, at the end of the loop instead of the net total, we'll have partial sums in each of the private copies of sumTH. At this point, we must reduce those values into the shared variable sum. We do this using the atomic construct, which occurs after the parallel loop, but still inside the parallel region. Of course, we still have mutexes in our code, however, their performance impact is greatly reduced. In the previous episode, our implementation used the atomic mutex inside the loop, so we performed n atomic operations, where n is 1000. In our current improved implementation, we perform only as many atomic operations as the number of threads that we have, which is around 48 for my workstation. Moreover, as we increase the size of the problem, n, the amount of synchronization in the original implementation increases, but the number of atomic operations in the improved implementation stays constant. The algorithm shown here can be improved further by implementing, for example, binary tree reduction instead of sequential reduction. In this case, the amount of synchronization will be proportional to the logarithm of the number of threads. However, for parallel loops with great amount of computation, the simple algorithm we have implemented here may be sufficient. The reason why we demonstrated the machinery of parallel reduction instead of just using the reduction clause of OpenMP is that the reduction clause has limitations. Specifically, it can be applied only to scalars and to a limited set of operations. When we must perform reduction on arrays or complex objects, or with custom operations, the clause reduction cannot be used, and we can program the procedure shown in this episode. Pay close attention to this code, because the procedure used here will be used a number of times in our examples in the next chapter, where we study more complex examples and focus on performance optimization. This concludes our introduction to thread parallelism in shared memory with OpenMP. We could not possibly do justice to this framework in the limited amount of time that we had for it in this course. However, we covered the topics and techniques which may be sufficient in many practical applications. For more information about OpenMP, refer to one of the following resources. OpenMP specifications, written tutorial for Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and a video course from Intel. In the next section, we will continue to learn about expressing parallelism and talk about parallelism in distributed memory with MPI.